Welcome to our webinar, folks. We've got people piling in here, so um, unmuting everybody so you guys can say hello. Hi, familiar faces coming in, repeat visitors, that's always good. Kate Rakish, RL2, Ronald Brooks, Barry Berman, Joe Castro, Marvino Hill, S. Blair, Dean Gallagher, David Hill, Shankar Bhatt. Welcome, everybody. Ken Booster. I'd really appreciate if all of you guys could try to say hello either with your mic, let us know where you're from, if you've taken any of the comments, or chat box. Make sure you find that chat box because we will be posting some links in there uh, to be able to get some special deals on our program uh, later on in the presentation. Good morning, investors. How are we all doing today? Good. Hey, Dean, you got your audio today? Yes, sir. Ronald yeah, thanks as well. Well. Welcome, Ronald. Hey, Ronald, how's everything going? Good morning. Marvino says, hello, is Mike still not working? No problem. Uh, everybody can hear my audio okay? Yep. Yeah, sounds good. Test one, two, three, yep, okay, good. All right, we still got some people joining. Welcome. I think your uh, mic is muted, Dean. I can't hear you yet. Okay, can you hear me now? All right, well, we'll uh, start this presentation in a few minutes. Thank you, everybody, for joining the webinar. Uh, Dave, I see your mic's working. How's it going? Hey, Jason, doing great, bud. Can you hear me now? Okay, no worries. Two, two, eight. Lower case. Make sure I got my audio up. Yep. Hey, Jason, can you hear me now? Hello? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the password. We're able to do it. <clears throat> Hello. Kate, how's it going out there? I can see you got your mic on. I can't hear you just yet. <laughs> oh, you couldn't hear me? Hello. You seem to be coming through. <laughs> People, Eric, welcome to the webinar. We'll start out in here, guys. Everybody looking in. And uh, yeah, I've got audio in there, but I'm not hearing everybody. Go ahead and mute. Um, let me see what's going on on my side because I can't hear anybody. Live. All Jason, can you hear me now? Hey, Jason, can you hear me? Can the rest of the crowd hear me? This is Dean. Yeah, Dean, you're coming through, but I don't know why he can't hear you. Okay. 
Yeah, give us uh, just a few minute, minutes, folks, and, and thank you for that. Uh, I appreciate the, the communication there. Yeah, we can hear you. Hey, Karen, how's it going? Good. All right. How many uh, shares have you scaled up to now, Karen? <laughs> Actually, none. I'm waiting. You know, s and is so high at this point, despite, you know, just getting our sound fixed here on my end, and we'll begin this. Okay. Yeah, um, I think the uh, the path is finally clear to, to set new all-time highs, so it's, it's not too high. And just like you saw in the TLT trade, uh, when we need to switch the direction, it's okay. Uh, all we have to do is kind of reverse engineer a uh, bullet in a bullet setup for a bear setup, and we can absolutely profit on the way down just like we did today on TLT. So uh, it, it really doesn't matter what happens. We just want to make sure we have the 100 lot shares to where we can position either way uh, we need to. And I was, I was actually studying uh, some charts this morning, Karen. And I was seeing how we had a really big rotation out of a lot of the big um, uh, momentum groups, or Momo names is what I like to call them. And the last three times that happened, there was a huge rotation um, uh, in the Momo names. Uh, the market pushed to new all-time highs. And, uh, I mean, th these were – this is 2009, 2014 – uh, you know, 2006, and each time it was just a massive push up after. Uh, all right, I got my audio fixed. Sorry, guys. I bet you guys were all screaming and yelling at me. Hey, Dean, how's it going? Good, Jason. You can hear me now, buddy? If anybody wanted to say hi, I can say hi back now and actually hear <laughs> Uh Kate, I know you were speaking. Barry, Ken, you guys got your uh, mics unmuted. Rakesh, do you want to say hello one more time? Hi guys, hello here, this is Rakesh here. Hello. Hello. I'm here. Hey Kate, how's it going? It's good, everything is good. That's good, did you uh, take any of our trades as of lately? No. Still watching? Well, no problem. We're not getting rich overnight, we're just slowly <laughs> taking them out, so yeah. good to get uh, confident, no. You're not dealing with a snake. First, I have to buy this by, you know, you know um, like shares. Right? What about you, Dave? Did you uh, take any of the trades? Let me ask this. Has anybody taken any of the trades or has everybody just been kind of watching on the sideline? Okay, Ronald did the SPY and the TLT. So, all right, let me ask you this, Ronald. Are you a believer yet? Or you need a few more winning trades to be a believer? Barry's been watching. Ronald says, looks good. Okay, I'm gonna go, we're getting a lot of noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody except Dean for now. Do a small presentation and then we'll open this up for questions. Uh, yeah, so now, Ron, I do want to to uh, to say that this is a better period of profits than normal. Definitely overshooting our target of 1% a month. Um, so it's been a good, good series of trades. All right, guys, what we're going to do today to start off is I just want to review our winning streak and kind of give you a feel for what kind of profits we're generating, how it works. And then we'll uh, open it up for questions and see if we can't get some of you guys uh, off the sideline. It's not fun to be on the bench watching all the other players have fun. So we'll try to get you on the court uh, scoring some points here. Yeah, yeah, Rakesh absolutely. says, can you please uh, talk about the logic? Yeah, Rakesh, if you want to learn how to analyze the markets and predict the future, that's really my expertise with the program the boot camp's going to be perfect for you because I am going to show you in the boot camp. It's not some sort of magic wand I can uh, flash in front of your eyes and now you can predict the future like we have. Uh, so I'll go over what I look at for sure, but realize that's what we have for our 16-week boot camp where we do really train you to, uh, to not just follow the trade alerts 
a lot of people start off, you know, they're used to getting burned by these advisory products. Uh, I could go on with the list, but you know, quite often you don't know when the trade alerts will come out. That's the first biggest problem. So you miss it or you get a bad price. Two, the guru doesn't necessarily tell you what percentage of your portfolio to invest. So you don't know if you're putting too much or too little in. Number three, they're trading very illiquid products uh, that you can't get the same fill as they do. So think of all those penny stock pumpers and small cap pumpers out there. They put out a trade alert, buy it with their own cash. By the time all their members buy it, it's up 50%. Minutes later, they're selling it. Now you see huge losses. It's a huge ripoff. Uh, so uh, certainly that's the first roadblock we typically have with the client is they've been burnt so many times in the past that they're very skeptical. So that is why, again, our marketing is the exact opposite of everyone else's. Uh, and another thing, I was talking to a client for about an hour and a half yesterday. We we're just going on and on about all the, uh, all the really rip off products out there. And, uh, <clears throat> and so at the end of the day, this product uh, actually has about a 99% success rate with the people who order it are actually getting the same result. And we'll talk about why that's possible with this program when it's not with most others. Uh, but I do want to, to say in, in 10 years of doing this, I have represented just about everybody out there uh, that you could possibly think of. Sold tens of millions of dollars of their products. And the bad news is this, even though they were reporting great returns, maybe they were really getting them for themselves. The, at the end of the day, nobody else was getting the same result. So you can try to guess. Uh, in fact, try to guess what the average refund rate is on an advisory product in the industry. If you can post that in the chat box, uh, I'll have a chuckle. It's very, very high. And then after you guess that, try to guess what our refund rate is. And it's close to 0% on ours. And that is, again, because we, we know that everybody's been taken to the cleaners and we know we have to build your trust. So most people come in, they watch for weeks, sometimes months, until they see, wow, this is very repetitive, it's very predictable, and it works. And so eventually they start trying out a few trades, and then within a month or two, typically my average client will realize what we're doing is so much smarter than what they've ever done for their entire life, that they essentially consolidate all of their capital and put it all in on this strategy. Now, if they are a speculator, I tell them, all right, put your speculation in a separate brokerage account. Go have your play, play money over there. What we're doing is much more serious and it's much more conservative. And that's how we're able to consistently win. So yeah, the refund rate of a good trading advisory, in my experience in the last decade, was over 50%. Now, if the trading advisory uh, just was terrible, which most of them are, they're fighting refund rates of 75%. We've sold this program for about 10 months now to over 125 clients. Average person has at least 100 grand. Some of these guys have a couple million following it. We've only had one refund, and it's from this lady who absolutely did not follow the trade alerts for whatever reason. She bought the spy at uh, the last all-time high and then just sat on it without following our trade alerts and was wondering why she lost money. Uh, so that is our only refund. We're very proud of being able to have a 99% success rate, I guess a little over 99, since it's 125 clients, who are actually getting the results of the advisory. And we'll talk about why that's possible and why that's probably something you haven't experienced in the past. Uh, so real quick, just a, a look at some of our recent trades, just to give you a feel of the profits. And again, uh, this is the trade alert schedule. On Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon Eastern, you can count on it. You'll get your trade alert right on time. We're gonna trade the SPY ETF. We're gonna own 100 shares of the SPY or at least multiples of 100 shares of the SPY. We're gonna sell a call option and buy a put option. We'll talk about why and how that works in a minute, but that's where we're trading around 40% of our total assets. Now on Tuesday, we have an alternative trade. This is where instead of trading the highly diversified SPY ETF, which encompasses 504 companies, 
and also takes advantage of option expirations expiring three times a week. Well, giving up some safety, we're going for a specific security or ETF. And so on Tuesday, we're taking on a much greater risk and trying to achieve a greater profit. Now, I don't want to fool you and say that the Tuesday trade is better than the Monday, Wednesday, Friday trade. It's just different. It has a higher degree of risk and it's trying to achieve a higher return. Now, some of my clients, uh, they would rather just trade twice a week. So they take the Tuesday play for their securities and equities, and then they take the Thursday play, which is actually our biggest profit maker this year, and they, and they simplify their life to just trade twice a week. Whatever you do, it's very important that you have an equal or close to equal ratio of stocks to bonds to make our strategy work. And in general, when one goes up, the other goes down, overall, it makes it very hard to have a losing period. And so, um, let's see. Okay, I unmuted you too, Dean, in case you ever wanna step in. I just heard a little background noise. So again, you know exactly when the trades are gonna come. That's probably the biggest secret to success for our clients, is simply knowing exactly what stock we're gonna trade and at what time. So at Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon Eastern, you're gonna get the email. It has pictures of how to place the trades. It has a video. You click the video, it's about 30 to 60 minutes long. That's where I'm gonna tell you what my market prediction is and why. So for Rakesh trying to figure out, you know, why are we betting up? Why are we betting down? That 30 to 60 minute video I publish daily is a very good way for you to get a good idea of what I'm following and condensing it all into a very easy to view video. Plus, I show you how to audit the returns so that you know this is the real deal. Um, but beyond that, if you really do wanna take your education to the next level, we do have a boot camp, which I'll talk about a little later. And uh, that's gonna take a real time investment. If you want to really know what the work is involved in to try to predict the markets, uh, that's what that boot camp does. So you won't just be able to eat the fish. The advisory is really like putting the fish on a silver platter for you. We've got a lot of clients who are doing these trades on the phone. They ignore the emails. They don't watch the 60 minute video I produce every day. All they want is the text message. They put the trade in on their phone, it takes them two minutes, they're done. And what they like is that our trade setup is extremely safe. It's really not possible to have a really bad uh, period of losses because of the put options underneath our assets at all times. So we'll take a look at that. On the flip of the coin, on the other side of the story, these options that we do apply to the securities are a huge drag. Uh, the Thursday trade I release about 30 minutes earlier, Dave, so that we can uh, kind of rally everybody up <clears throat> for this webinar right here, which is, uh, this is the key way we do bring in new members. <clears throat> it's pretty impressive. Of the people who do join our webinars, we have an extremely high percentage of those who do decide uh, that this is the real deal and they want to join. So do expect the delivery on the Thursday trade to be a little early. The trade alerts are good all day. If you don't take it right at noon, it's not a big deal. We're not trading penny stocks. We're not trading small cap stocks. We're really trading the best of the best. So. The SPY ETF is the most highly traded security in the world. And on the Tuesday play, I'm really only looking at really three stocks, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, and every once in a blue moon, I might switch into silver ETF. Now, I do like the emerging market ETF if this China trade war really uh, does make a big step in a positive manner by the Chinese purchasing Chinese uh, farming goods. But other than that, we're trading the best of the best, nothing else. So the cream of the crop. And we'll talk about why that's so important when your goal is to generate in income and it's not to generate growth. So these returns have a really serious drag on it. If you were actually to remove all the options and just take the directional plays, these returns would be dramatically higher, but we're just not trying to achieve uh, growth. Our audience, in 10 years of doing this, I found the ones who end up buying these sort of advisory services typically have no business trying to do a growth strategy. And so 
uh, at the end of the day, they end up taking outlandish risks and they lose a ton of money. The horror stories that I've heard, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions of dollars being lost. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll show you some trade examples. Uh, Windows is getting excited, I can tell. Yeah, sure, let's look at some trades and then we'll go back to our track record. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at what exactly our trade setup looks like. It's extremely repetitive, it's extremely easy. And if you're the sort of investor who needs to be busy trading all day, you're gonna hate this program. Uh, Rakesh says, the money this strategy makes is due to premiums, but your guidance gives no instructions for the premiums. The premiums change over time and hence important. Well, sometimes Rakesh. Now, if you're following the daily video, you would know that's not the case right now. Uh, in many cases, the, the underlying asset generates the profit. In fact, we're only going to try to generate profit from the premiums when the price is overvalued and we think it's going to be stuck in a trading range. So if we think the market's flat, that's when we would start trying to make the profit from selling call options. In this particular series of trades, the options actually were a drag on our profit. So a lot of people get really caught up and it's probably because of the marketing movie I put together. They get really caught up <clears throat> on how they want to make their profit and they lose sight of the real goal which is simply to generate around a one to 2% return per month with extremely low risk. And so if you're completely obsessed with trying to sell a call option to generate your profit, you might miss out on some of the biggest moves in the market that just hand you really nice paydays. And so let's just take a look at some of the recent trades uh, leading up to today on the SPY so you can get a feeling for what our trade setups look like. So I wanted to go back in time until I actually had a losing trade so that you could see how, <clears throat> just how impressive our winning streak has been in the last several weeks. And then go up to the current time period so you get a feel for what does a profit look like. You can see what the average is, is ending up at, just, a, just over 1% on a really good month, 3%. Uh, but also, what's, what does a losing trade look like? Okay, so I'm gonna go show you guys some trade alerts. This trade alert was on 826. It's the first loss I could find going back in time, not skipping any trades. So, um, and I'll pull up a chart of the SPY. By the way, if you did take today's trade on the TLT, uh, you're already in the profit zone. Okay, we'll look at today's trade in a minute. Um, but yeah, we already hit the maximum profit on today's trade within hours. That's quite remarkable. Uh, this TLT is just getting killed. And TLT has been one of our easiest money makers this year. Okay, so here's the format of all trade alerts. Right now, we're going to overview what it looks like to trade the SPY ETF. And then we'll look at what we do with the TLT over the last few trades. If we have time, I'll, maybe I'll show you what the Tuesday trade looks like and even go over our boot camp. And we'll try to squeeze in questions at any time. Use that chat box to ask me questions. The more questions, the better. Please don't feel like there's any stupid questions. If you're thinking it, uh, the 15 other people on this webinar are thinking it as well. And a few other people joined. Just want to say hi to Craig, Dan, Eric, and Windows Windows, whoever that is. Okay, so here's our typical format of a trade alert. You have a video up top. Now, it's not your normal video where it's a pre-recorded video. <clears throat> it's actually a live stream video. So if you click it right when the alert comes out, it's a live stream YouTube feed where I go over the results of the previous trading period. I look at the big picture, what we're predicting is going to happen. And then we go through all the <clears throat> top macro news. Excuse me, I've been fighting a cold this week. Now, what's important is YouTube automatically takes that video and puts it online so that if you do click it late, it's not a big deal. You can still watch recording. But if you do click it real time, you have live access to chat with me every single day. So that's a huge benefit. If you have any questions about the current trade, you can just post it into the chat box. 
I can help you get filled. Some people get concerned when the option contract, maybe it cost me a five cent debit and all of a sudden it's gonna give you a three cent credit. People freak out. It's not a big deal. We can answer your questions right there live. But this is the top of every trade alert, Monday through Friday, video with a link. Below that, we immediately go into the previous trade results. Okay, so there's a very simple accounting system to track the results, which I'll show you right here. Step one is we have to look at what happened to our underlying asset. So in this trade alert, uh, we're not looking at the trade alert previous to this, we're just looking at the results. The SPY had traveled lower from 287.22 to 287.11. So we lost 11 cents on our asset, the SPY. The options we purchased were $2.13 for the a debit to our account. So we had to pay $213 for every 100 shares of the SPY to put on the recommended option contract that protected this position. Well, come today, at, the point of this trade alert, we had to pay 72, or we collected 72 cent credit. So we ended up losing $1.41, plus we lost 11 cents. So we lost $1.52 on this trade. Now, let's look at what the new trade was. So we can see, what you're gonna see now is a string of winning trades up to the current. And in fact, today's trade, uh, or the current SPY trades at the max profit right now as well. Okay, so you can scroll below. Every email has a link to the track record. All of this is in the track record. So you can go through it with a fine comb if you like, uh, but do realize I'm doing the auditing for you every day live stream. And as you can see, the audit's quite simple. All we gotta do is track the change of value of the asset and the change of value of the options. And you do that every trading period. So here is the new trade. This is what you get text message. So we have a lot of clients who, uh, quite frankly, don't bother to watch my one hour video. They just take the trades and every once in a while they'll call me up and ask, you know, why, how did you figure that out? I was like, well, why didn't you watch the live stream? That's where I told you that. <clears throat> so the live stream is very important. And this is what you're gonna get as a text message, which also summarizes the profit loss how to get out of the last week's trade, and what to do with the new trade. Okay, so step one. Step one is always gonna be to close out the previous week's trade. Let me ask you guys this, who has traded options before? Uh, if you could post in the live chat, either a yes or a no. Okay, Dave says no. Dave, you might really consider the boot camp for all of you guys out there. Okay, we've got a lot of yeses. Let me ask you this. If I said we're going to uh, sell a call option, do you know what that means? If we're short a call, is that something everybody's familiar with? What about long a put? Okay, Dave, Dave, you definitely might consider the boot camp. Uh, a lot of clients we've actually been able to get up and running. They can take the trades. They have no clue what the hell's going on, uh, but they're making money. So that might be where you want to be. But if you really want to understand, you know, what all the terminology means. Okay, so if, if you know what short a call is and long a put, that's the entire education you need to follow all of our trade alerts 100%. And I've seen all the fancy options trading strategies under the sun. At the end of the day, you really don't need to make it that complex to generate very consistent returns. Uh, Ronald wants to know the price of the service. That's top secret. I'm just kidding, Ronald. We have a lot of options, payment plans, so we can get you, get you going. Dean can call you after the webinar to discuss uh, pricing. Okay, so step one in your trade alert is going to show you visually how to get out of the trade. Okay, so... We buy to open or sell to open the call and then we buy to close the put. Now in this particular trade, uh, we only had to sell to close the put. And I think on this trade, we were actually predicting a big move up in the SPY. Regardless, this got us out of the previous trade. So step one is always gonna review, how do we get out? Step two is gonna give you the new trading idea. 
Okay, now in this setup, you can see we actually didn't sell a call. And this is because uh, the SPY had been selling off and we we're expecting a big rally in the SPY. And this goes back to Rakesh, who's, you know, if you're only looking at trying to generate income from the premium of the covered call, sometimes that's not the best bet. And in this case, we actually decided not to sell a call and we only bought a put option. So this means we're protected to the downside, but we have unlimited upside potential. Okay, so that was the trade alert for that period, and you can see the risk chart. So the maximum risk we had was 497 because we had purchased that 283 put, and we're allowing the SPY to just go wild. Now this is not our normal trade, uh, but this was uh, the current situation where I was very certain equities were traveling higher, and that bonds were gonna travel lower. And this is because Trump had finally came out with the uh, tariff escalation that we were predict, uh, predicting, and we had already had the sell-off. Let's see what the results were. Okay, so to track your results, again, you're gonna look at step two and pay attention to that last trading price. So we can see it's trading at 287.02. And to enter the option contract, which again is always, almost always going to be a drag on our profits, we had to pay 98 cents a share, $98. All right, so let's look at the audit of our returns. So here's the next trade two days later, 828. Okay, the top of the trade, right away, we're going to audit our results. SPY traveled from 287.11 to 288.39. $1.28 profit. Unfortunately, our put option lost 95 cents. So we gave up the majority of that profit and we walked away with a 33 cent profit per share. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but I'm going to tell you our goal with this program is only to average 25 cents a share three times a week, 52 weeks a year. And in fact, if you accomplish that, it may seem like a low ball return, but if you accomplish that, that's a 12% return per year. And so you can see at 33 cents or $33 a contract, if you do that three times a week, 52 weeks a year, that's a 17% annualized return. Again, our target return is 1% a month with absolute protection to the downside. So let's just go back really quick and talk about why it was smart to throw away a dollar of our profit. We predicted the SPY would go up, but we still bought this expensive put option. Well, what if we were wrong? What if that was not the end of the sell-off? What would happen? The SPY is trading at 287. Let's say North Korea starts testing nuclear bombs again. Maybe they fly something over at Japan. Maybe China has bloodshed in Hong Kong. Maybe Taiwan does something to aggravate China. Maybe there's war in the Middle East. Maybe the Fed doesn't drop rates. Who knows? There's so many risks out there. Do you really want to worry about all the risks? I sure don't. And that's what our program's all about, is removing that fear of risk. And so we invested in the insurance policy and bought that 283 put. So if we buy a put option, that gives us the right to sell our shares for that strike price. Now we're gonna lose the 98 cents we paid for that option contract, but now we can sleep like a baby. Our portfolio is what I call atomic bomb proof. Atomic bombs could be going off. We wake up the next day, SPY is trading at $200. Everybody else lost $87 a share. We didn't. We get to pay 283 for each share. So that's why we buy the put option. It really makes our lives risk-free. Now, that's not going to make us money, but it does help us feel safe at night and not have big hits to the account. Now, how many times this year, and really think about Christmas last year, have you seen huge swings in the value of your equities portfolio? There's been some 3 to 5% drops in a day several times this year. And if you go back to the Christmas massacre, it was much worse. So if you don't ever wanna have that feeling again, <clears throat> that's something that this program will do for you. Okay, so let's look at the next trade. Now, there is a whole 
bunch of things coming in at once that made me think the stock market was headed much higher. And I still think it's headed much higher. Mainly was that we had pretty good evidence that the Federal Reserve and the ECB would be lowering interest rates and starting up QE, which means they're going to start buying up bonds. When all the pressure off the bond markets removed from the central banks, all that money flows into equities. So I was predicting that the trade war tariff was going to take a pause, that we'd seen what was happening from uh, the two sides escalating, and that we would now have a period of ease. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened and how we've been able to have a considerable series of winning trades. So let's look at what our next trade was. So again, you have your track record updated. You have a link to the track record. You have a link to every alert we've ever issued. And then you have the trade alert summary. This is what you get text message to you. So if you're on the road, you can get it on the go. Two minute trade. We summarize the profit or the loss and we link you to the YouTube video. So you have it all on the go. If you're at your computer, no problem. Okay, step one, we had to get out of the trade the option portion. Step two, we immediately open a new option contract. Now again, if I think the SPY is going to fly up 10, 20, 30 dollars in just a few weeks, we can make much more money simply owning the SPY and not worry about trying to generate profit from selling option premium. Now I do want to generate option premium when I think the SPY is overbought. We're not there yet. So here is the next trade alert on 828. Sell to open the August 30th, 2019, 291.50 call option. So we get a credit. We got 58 cents a share for $58 contract. The agreement is that we would sell our shares for 291.50, but look, at the point of doing the trade, it's trading at 288.39. <clears throat> so that's a pretty good deal. We'd essentially get about $3 profit on the SPY if we were signed on that option contract, plus get to keep the 58 cents. So that's not a bad deal at all. But what did we do with the 58 cents? We used it to buy put option. Always play it safe. So the worst case scenario is if we're completely wrong, things were going to get worse before they got better. SPY crashes the next day. Our worst case scenario is we only lose $4 a share. We get 284 because we bought the put. Now I'll tell you, we have a lot of rich people following the program who've been complaining all year about giving up part of the profits to the put options. I call them the peanut gallery, but every once in a blue moon, we get those 5% sell-offs in a short period of time. And our clients write in saying, well, I'm sure glad I got that insurance. I was able to mitigate the loss dramatically. All right, so here is our new trade. Again, you'll have a chart to show you the profit loss potential. And you can see in this trade setup, we had a maximum profit of 298 per block of 100 shares of SPY. And at the same breath, if things went nasty, no matter how low the SPY crashed to, uh, our maximum loss was cut off at 452 or $4.52 a share. Okay, so we go two days into the future. What happened? Well, we start off by auditing our results as always. SPY went from 288.39 to 292.19 for a $3.80 gain. The option contracts continued to be a drag on our profits. They went from a 13 cent debit to a $1.08 debit to get out for a loss of $1.21. Sure enough, we pulled in a big profit, 10 times our target return, $2.59 a share. So on 1,700 shares, that's $4,403 in a 48-hour window. Now, that's over 110% annualized return, and we're not trying to hit that sort of return. We just aren't. Sometimes we get these big hits, and it's usually when the SPY ETF dramatically rises in value, and we're able to predict that move. Okay, you got your track record updated, you got your link to the track record, you got a link to all the previous trades, you get your text message. This is the text message that goes out. Again, you wanna do these trades on the road? Easy. This also will have a link to the live stream video so you can watch that as well. 
Step one, we're gonna get you out of the last trade. So typical setup is we, we're short a call, long a put. So we have to buy to close that call and sell to close that put. This costs us a debit of $1.08 and we're on our way to the next trade alert. What's the next trade alert? So now we're trading at 292. You can see it in the right hand corner. You can see that we sold the 297 call option and we bought the 289 put. So we go to the next trade alert. Again, here's the audit. SPY traveled from 292.19 to 293.32 for a $1.13 gain. Option contract lost 87 cents. Again, it is a drag on our profits. We made 26 cents a share. And again, that's actually what our target return is on average. So we go down, you got your track record, you got your link to the track record, you got your text message summarizing how to get in and out text message to you plus a link to the video. We're gonna show you exactly how to close it. In this case, the put option was only worth a penny. You can't sell a long put for a penny. No one wants to buy it. So all we had to do was buy to close the call. Go to the next step. Here's how you enter the new trade. Spy's now at 293.29. We're selling the 296 call and we're buying the 290s put. So we've got downside protection, worst case scenario. So we get 290 a share, no matter how low the SPY goes. Best case scenario is we get cut off of the profit potential when the SPY goes above 296. Let's look at what happened. Here's your audit. Wow, big jump in the SPY. $5 gain from 293 up to 298. But our option caller, again, a drag on our return, but it provides the safety we lost 262 on that option caller, net profit 239. Again, that's about 10 times higher than we're trying to achieve on average. So that's a better than normal return. Scroll down, you got your track record updated, you get your text message. Here's how to get out of the trade. Again, the put expired worthless, so all we have to do is buy to close the call. Let me get a quick feeling for you. Who out there thinks they could actually follow these trade alerts right now, no problem? And then on the other hand, who feels like they might need a little training to be able to confidently follow these trades? Just post in the chat, let me know. <clears throat> and uh, Dean, I'm gonna go get some hot tea just for my voice real quick. If you wanna maybe tell them a little bit about your experience with the program and why you like it so much. Sure. And I'll be right back. Okay, right, sounds good. I'm fighting some nasty allergies this week. Hey team. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, for me, um, the number one thing that I've found is, um, the lack of stress and, um, using a, a quite a significant portion of my nest egg, um, as you know, once you kind of put yourself into the steel box uh, that we put you in every time that we enter a trade, um, you know your your downside is absolutely defined uh your your upside is absolutely defined and you're going to fall somewhere in that parameter okay and it, like jason said there's no atomic bomb scenario literally an atomic bomb could go off today uh china could send over an atomic bomb you know hey we're not going to buy anything trade wars are going to go nuts uh and, and nothing would happen to my portfolio okay um you know we're we're, we're going to be protected to the downside <clears throat> because of the way we engineer the trade and uh, the number one thing that I, that I found, and, and I, I see this today, is, you know, really, I wasn't doing anything to limit my downside. And, uh, you know, those days that I was having uh, 30, 40, $50,000 swings down um, were just so stressful uh, for me. And that's this system and the way we engineer the trade has absolutely completely eliminated 100% of that stress. Um, and really, uh, you know, once I kind of really look back on it, I think once I took the mindset from trading offensively to defensively, uh, my stress level has gone down. I, I sleep better. 
Um, and now I, I have close to four hundred thousand um, dollars with this system. I'm 34, so yes, I still have uh, you know my gambling portfolio, as I like to call it now, honestly. Um, and I, I still have that. Um, but I'll tell you what, uh, you know that portfolio, that side of my portfolio, you know I'm up at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, checking the futures, making sure things are still going right because I have a lot of money and something that's probably a little too risky. Now with this side of my portfolio, I don't do that at all. Um, and, and, you know, I, I keep telling Jason, as soon as I get to a million bucks, I'm, I'm just going to trade this system for the rest of my life, uh, period. Um, and, you know, and, and Jason always likes to say, Hey, we're not trying to beat the market, but, uh, man, it's, it's just been insane what we've been able to do. And our number one thing is capital pre preservation of your nest egg. Um, and the side effect is, is ROI as to where the average investor is just thinking about how much money can they make in the stock market. And then, you know, a Trump tweet comes out and all of a sudden they're down 40 or 50,000 bucks and they're not happy. Right. Um, we just, we don't have to deal with that. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have asked me, you know, Oh, well, you know, I think uh, the spy is, you know, might be too high right now. Well, really the most important thing is to own hundred lot shares so we can engineer the, our option engineering the way we do. Okay. Because uh, we can make money in any market, up, down, sideways, flat. And I think uh, if you look back at May and you see that the market lost 7.8% that month on the SPY, uh, I remember specifically my my Apple ownership went down 14.7%. And then I look across on my portfolio on the SPY and I'm going, this is, this is crazy because I have gains generated from the option premium. And as soon as SPY gets back above 292, that's a profitable, profitable month for the year. And, and sure enough, as of where things are today, uh, May that sold off 7.8% uh, was the worst month of 2019. We made money. Um, and so, I mean, really all this system really does is, is, is number one, take so much risk out of the market, probably take, um, you know, 98% uh, of the risk off of, of your trading. Okay. Uh, and, and I guarantee you, most of you aren't doing that today. Okay. Um, so it's just a, it's a great way to de-risk, to get defensive. And uh, honestly, as far as following the trades, it takes me about 30 seconds now. And if you're not following, if you're on the trial and you're not following the trades uh, with real capital, please make sure to put them on a paper trade. Um, that way you can theoretically test out exactly what we're doing. Okay. And, and see it with a theoretical, theoretical use of capital. So if you're thinking about putting 200K, 300K, 500K, you know, a couple million bucks, whatever that number is behind us, uh, if, if you're in the trial, please use the paper trading account. And honestly, folks, I've had uh, now, I think it's like 17 of our members total make more than the cost of the trial um, or more than the cost of the membership during their trial because they did use real capital. Okay. And, and you know, you're welcome to do that and you're welcome to paper trade, but uh, what's super important is that you get following the trades. Um, and as soon as you do, that's how we, we build our trust with you. That's how we, you know, take members from, um, you know, uh, an annual membership to a lifetime membership. And we've done that now with, with, uh, actually more than, more than half of our clients over a 10 month period. So I think that's super impressive. And, uh, I would love to take a look at your investment ecosystem see what has too much risk in there. I can't tell you how many people I've helped save thousands upon thousands and thousands of dollars because they had too much risk in, in crappy stocks uh, that can absolutely just get annihilated by all the biggest stocks out there. Um, and yeah, just think our program will only consider about five stocks, period. Yep. Exactly. Um, yep. Okay. So uh, you probably have quite a few that are not on the safe list. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, no, it's not a cold, Marvino. It's these damn allergies hit me. Uh, so anyway, I feel better now. I got some tea. All right, let's continue. So I, we're just showing off the winning streak, giving you a feel for what the win rate looks like in a good streak and what the profit can vary. So here's another example, 27 cent profit. Uh, Rakesh says he needs guidance to understand the graphics and the audit, audits. We'll talk about our boot camp in a little bit. That's where we're going to really help you um, learn the details. 
So we'll go over that in a little bit. Week one, week two, it's a 16 week boot camp that repeats three times a year and includes flying out to Albuquerque to trade live. Now again, it's, it's a quick trade, but I'll watch over your shoulder and make sure you do it right for two days, a Thursday for the bond market and a Friday for the spy. Uh, also fun just to get to know each other in person. So let's go ahead and keep auditing our returns for a little bit. But yeah, it's simple, Ricky. So we, we track the change of price of the stock and then the change of price of the options. There's nothing else to, to worry about. So in this trade, SPY went from 298.33 to 298.71. 38 cent profit on the SPY. Option contracts, sometimes they're a drag. And, and we'll talk about in a little bit when we use the options to make money. If we think the SPY is going flat or down, we get our payday from the options. But if we think the SPY is rocketing to new highs, like I believe, Eric says, are the returns shown here today? Yeah, we have a really, really nice uh, spreadsheet to manage the profit loss, so you can go look at it. Um, here's a look at the total return. Now, we're reviewing the SPY program. Again, I don't recommend anybody be all in on SPY. Really, hey. the, the secret that most people aren't aware of. Ray Dalio has become famous doing this. You go half bonds, half stocks. When one goes down, usually the other goes up. So you combine them together, it's very hard to lose. This is just the SPY returns. Uh, so you can see our goal is to make 1% a month, but more so than being worried about making 1% a month, I'm gonna be more concerned about you not losing money. And so, uh, we've done that in the face of a very volatile stock market that, think about it, December, it's tanking as if it's 2008. January, it's rebounding as if it's uh, QE all over again, and it wasn't. And then we sit there wondering if tariffs are going to be uh, implemented. And sure enough, they did in August. And so we've, we've done a good job. I'm very proud of these returns. We've protected the capital, and we've delivered – close to 1% a month. Now, some months a little more, some months uh, we've had a loss. Uh, so here's a SPY portfolio. If you do take the Thursday trade and overlay it, uh, the return really smooth, smoothens out, and that is what I recommend. I'll go over capital allocation and how much money you need to follow in a minute. But if you do the Thursday trade with the TLT, that's US Treasury 20 plus uh, bond ETF, we're playing interest rates or changes of interest rates, uh, which is nice because unlike, unlike the stock market where you really have to predict what will happen, the bond market's a little easier because they literally tell you what they're going to do uh, before they announce it. And they're typically copycatting China. And whatever China does forces the hands of all of its trading partners. So that's why the bond market maybe doesn't necessarily have as much profit to be pulled out of it, even though it is our best winner this year. Uh, it's a lot easier to predict because they literally come out and tell you what they're going to do. Uh, so so that would be more of the boot camp education to try to understand why and how, how we're predicting these moves. But in general, if you don't know what you're doing, if you have half in the SPY and half in the TLT, you're, you have an extremely diverse portfolio, 504 companies in your equities portfolio. And think about it, the TLT represents the tax revenues of 350 million people and all the top companies, uh, most of the top companies in the world. So even though it's just two ETFs, it's extreme diversity. And so you overlay those and it's rock solid between one to 2% return all year. Uh, even in December, we squeaked out a 1.2% return. The only losing month was July, and uh, in July, I thought the tariffs were going to come up. It didn't happen until August, so we actually were prepared for a pretty good size equity crash in July, and it came out a month later, so we were a little early on that, uh, but not a big deal. So, hey, Jason, let me stop you real quick. Uh, Eric, just to clarify, and Jason, can you just scroll over to the left a few times? Um, so Eric, the, the year to date is 18.3%, uh, as you can see in 2019. So if you go to, to column, um, or if you go to row 15 there and scroll over and you can see, yep, now Jason's on it. That's 18.3%. 
Now, Jay, will you scroll back up to the, the total portfolio? So that's year to date, but we did start this program, Eric, uh, in the Christmas massacre of last year, okay, when when stocks sold off like crazy, right? Um, so, I, I mean, that's such a perfect testament uh, about how well the system works once you get balanced. Uh, I mean, look at, look at December of last year, 1.2% return. The market sold off over 10%. That month, um, look at May. You know, 2.2% uh, gain. Uh, the entire market uh, sold off 7.8% that month. So these are these are the months where we get our phone calls uh, from our investors uh, thanking us uh, because they're balanced and they're actually profiting uh, when 99% of the rest of America is getting hammered and not sleeping good at night and getting stressed. So. Just got a quick overview. Sorry, Jay, I'll let you have it back there. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so yeah, so we have the total return here. This is uh, all time. This one will break it down year to date. And um, after that, we break it down per portfolio, Eric, so you can see the returns for the SPY separately, the Tuesday play. Tuesday play is pretty impressive. Uh, it wasn't so lucky in December. It doesn't get the benefit of trading three times a week like the SPY does. So on the Tuesday play, we have to, we really have to take bigger risks to try to achieve bigger gains. And so 4% uh, loss in December for the Tuesday play, but it's up almost 26% this year. 3% in September. Uh, so this portfolio is very popular. People who want a little extra risk love, love this play. People who don't want risk prefer the SPY. So we, we have people who, uh, some people do both, and some people do one or the other. Uh, but what's important to really drive through your head is to have a ratio of stocks versus bonds so that when one goes up, the other goes down, the other goes down, the other goes up. And overlap them, it becomes very hard to lose. Now, in the most recent history, of our track record, I actually set up our clients to bet down on the TLT, uh, which was calling a top, top in one of the most crazy charts I've ever seen. Let's pull that up. Wow, so our Thursday trade is already at max profit today. We'll look at that one. Look at that. Nice. Boy, I hope, hope nobody was chasing the TLT at 145. Very nice, Jason. All right, so let's just keep, well, let's finish the audit of a few more trades. Again, you guys can go through all these trade alerts on your own time if you want. You get the live video. Even when your free trial expires, you still get the YouTube video daily so you can see what happened on the previous trade. You just won't see the current trade alert. Um, and we found people will sit there for months before they decide to take action, uh, which is funny, but uh, some people take action within their first three days, five days of taking the trial. They jump into the trades, they make money, they get it, they see how this all works. Uh, some people take their time, so it's totally up to you on that. Okay, so next trade, again, same format. It's very repetitive, guys. Step one, close the previous trade. Now, if the put option is only worth a penny, you can't get out of it. Let it expire worthless. You do always have to close any short calls uh, before you can open the new trade. Next trade, we sold the 302. You can see the last trading price was 298.70, and we bought the 295 put. So um, that was a very bullish trade. I mean, we only collected eight cents, and we bought a very – uh, out of the money put. Again, worst thing that happens, stock market crashes between now and the next trading period. We still get 2.95 a share because we were smart enough to invest a measly 17 cents in crash insurance. Who's too cheap to put 17 cents into crash insurance when it's being paid for uh, by selling a call option? All right, let's go to the next period. <clears throat> SPY went up 29 cents. Option caller lost 10 cents. We had a net profit of 19 cents. Better than a sharp stick in the eye, $323 profit. Nothing huge below our average goal, but you've seen we've had some pretty big winners. 
So you'll see, we have these big winners and we have some kind of duds and then we have a big winner and then we might have a loss. And that's just the, the cycle of these trades. All right, so that is a wrap of our last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven SPY trades. Uh, let's take a look at some of our TLT trades. Now, if I do look at the return of the TLT program, it's been very smooth. We only had one losing month in February, which is funny because that's when the Fed finally uh, capitulated, gave up on hiking rates, started talking about ending QT sooner than later. It was not enough. Bond market was a little bit upset. I think that's what may happen to the bond market next week, which is why we're still short the TLT. Um, okay, so we have had a very smooth return the entire year we've been bullish on the TLT with our trade alerts until the last two weeks. And I was getting a little nervous because it took a while for this TLT to really break down, uh, but it did, and it did dramatically. Now, we're not playing some sort of super risky strategy to uh, get rich from predicting moves in the TLT. Nope, it's still that same boring setup where you have a very limited risk and a very limited profit. And we're just trying to continually hit these safe uh, first base hits. Okay, so let's look at this trade. In fact, maybe I'll pull up one prior to it so you guys can see how we got the profit on this one. Uh, I have to go back quite, I can't remember the last time we had a losing trade in this portfolio. Um, so I'll just go back a few. Okay, good. There you go. Here's a loss on the TLT. I, just to be fair, I want to start all off with a loss and we'll look at some of the most, uh, the trades leading up. So this trade came off with a 87 cent sh share loss. And it is saying, hey, don't forget last week we had a dollar eighty-one. Uh, same format. We were doing a little extra playing uh, the gold market with some extra options trades on that one. You had to get out of the previous trade, buy to close your call, sell to close your put. Same thing. All the trades are very close to the to the previous uh, spy trade examples. Here's the new trade: sell to open the one forty-five fifty call. Buy to open the 142 put. Okay, so uh, at the time TLT was trading at 144.19. So this trade was bullish on the TLT on 822. You can see with the risk chart, if we lost and the TLT were to start selling off, we could lose up to $170 a contract or $1.70 a share. On the flip side, if the TLT were to continue rallying, we could make at most $179 a contract. Let's see what happened. So we go to the next trading period. TLT went up from 144.28 to 145.50 for a $1.22 profit per share. The TLT option caller earned an extra 35 cents and the gold call option, we paid 31 cents and pulled out 68 cents for a 35 cent profit. We had a profit of $1.94 per share of TLT, uh, which is $9,828 of annualized income. That's much higher than our average return, not typical. All right, let's look at the next trade. Same setup, you get your track record, you can go click and look at it. This is what we text message to you. You can go see all the previous trade alerts. Step one, buy to close that 145.50 call. The put option was only worth a penny. Let it go, nobody wants it. Step two, sell to open. Okay, now you can see we flipped the trade. This is what we call the upside down caller. Those of you who wanna make money from premium, now's the time to do it, as far as this trade alert said. So let's talk about this. We can see the TLT was worth 146.36 entering the trade. 
However, we sold a 145.50 in the money call option. So we're agreeing to sell our shares for less than they're worth. Why would we do that? Well, this fellow bought the contract for $1.70. So you look at the difference, we're giving up about 86 cents of value to collect $1.70. Not a bad deal if you think the TLT is not going to go up. Sure enough, it did not. And on the other side, we bought an in the money put. So we collected $1.70, reinvested it, plus some additional cash to buy this 370 put for $149.50. Okay, so this is what I call the upside down caller. Really, it's just selling an in the money call and buying an in the money put. Usually, we sell an out of the money call and we buy an out of the money put if we think the asset's going up. And that's what we've done all year up until this very date where I called the top in the TLT. All right, so let's see what happened. Now you get your risk chart. You can see all of a sudden it shows you you're only going to make money if it goes down. And uh, one thing about put options is as volatility increases, their value goes up exponentially. So because we close these out on a Thursday and not a Friday, uh, this risk chart doesn't accurately describe <clears throat> what your maximum profit really is. Uh, now on the other side of the trade, it does accurately calculate what your maximum loss is. So let's look at what happened. So we can see we paid a debit of $2. To get out, we got a credit of $4.39. And we can see the SPY was trading at $146.36. And when we got out, it was trading at 144.74. Let's audit our results. TLT lost a value of $1.22. Option caller cost $2 to enter, generated a profit of $4.39 to exit, or a net profit of $2.39. Subtract the $1.22 loss from the $2.39 profit on the options. You walk away with a nice handsome dollar 21 a share. Now TLT is gonna show a loss, uh, but it's made up for by all the profits on your option contract. So that's how we made a dollar 21 profit per share of TLT betting down on the TLT. Guess what we did on the next trade? Very similar setup. Again, you got your track record, you got your text message, you got all the previous trades. You wanna go audit this, go for it. Step one, we gotta get you out. Okay, we just looked at that screenshot. Let's look at the new trade. Once again, we sold an in the money call. You can see the last trading price was 144.80. We sold the 144 for $1.70. So we're giving up 80 cents of value if we're assigned, but we get to keep the $1.71. Where we would lose if the TLT went up is our put option losing value. We paid $1.92 to get an in the money put, the 146 put. That's a very valuable put option to short the TLT. So let's see what happened. And again, right below that, you got your risk chart. If you like repetitive, that's what we got for you guys. Let's go look, I'll show you the close. Here's how we got out of the new trade. So we paid 22 cent debit, trades at 144.80. And we really, really nailed it calling the top on the TLT. And that was a hard call to make. Um, so here we go. Buy to close the call, sell to close the put. We collected 569, big credit. Uh, let's look at the audit. TLT lost $3.87, negative 387 TLT caller. Cost a 22 cent debit delivered a, a $5.69 credit for a profit of 547. Take the difference, you made $1.60 a share. $6,240 of income. Today's trade, we'll just brag about it since it's winning. Um, here's your new trade. Sell to open the 140 call, buy to open the 142 put. So, Really just to make your life easy, if we do a setup like this, 
wherever we sold the call, if it goes below that, we start to make a really nice profit. Um, so I'm not sure if we're there right this second. Uh, let's see where we're at in the TLT right now. Wow, so we're already 50 cents, 60 cents below where we need to go to hit the max profit on this. Now I say max profit, when we do make these downside trades, if the asset is plunging at a rapid rate, it will actually boost what our profit can be because of the option premium and the, the way they calculate the value of the options. So they're gonna look at that time premium. We got a whole day left. It's falling rapidly. It's gonna make the relative value of the put go up. And so that's how we can sometimes get an extra 20, 50 cents a share on those trades. Okay, so that is the most recent trade. Let's stop and take a break and see what kind of questions we got out there. Let me ask you this, who's ready to join the program right now and start you know, doing the program all, all trades five days a week? Okay, Rakesh has a question from a cash flow standpoint. So Rakesh, yeah, this is a common thing. People are like, well, I don't want to make my profit from the SPY. I want to make it from the premium. Well, that's just not the way it works. Uh, sometimes the option premium delivers the profit. Sometimes the asset premium uh, or, or appreciation delivers the profit. So if you're going to be stuck on uh, where your profit comes from, you're going you're gonna to be stuck at ground zero. So I, I think boot camp might really be helpful for you so you start to really understand it. But essentially, sell one share of the SPY and you get, you know, you get your, pro your profit out of it. Now your broker gives you a lot of buying power, so it's not a big deal. Let's say you had enough, sh uh, enough capital to buy 99 shares of the SPY and we just, uh, because we just sold one of your shares for paying your bill. Your broker gives you a lot of margin, usually two, three, four times your deposit. So you can sell one share, two shares of the SPY to take your profits out of the asset and then cash it out to pay your bills. So once again, I don't care how we get the one to 2% return a month. We got to look at what makes the most sense for that period of time. And if the market's going to go flat or down, your options deliver the profit. If the market's going up, we're better off letting the asset deliver the profit. Okay, Dave, hey, thanks for, uh, for joining us today. And good luck at your meeting. Uh, Eric says, what portfolio size do you recommend? All of, all of your money is what I recommend. That's what most of our clients do. They quickly realize that this is much smarter than what they're doing. It's safer, it's more consistent, protects your capital at all times, and it's still relatively passive. You're only showing up to trade for a few minutes. Um, now, if you use interactive brokers, you can put like 25 grand into it and they'll give you at least a hundred grand buying power. So this is not a super risky strategy where I'd say, hey, don't use the buying power your, your broker gives you. Uh, the cheapest setup is this right here, Tuesday trade, Thursday trade. You could follow it with just uh, about 34,000. Now we are recommending 40% in equities, well, more like 50% in equities, 40% in bonds, and then 10% buy and hold GDX gold. So you could literally put $10,000 into interactive brokers to play with, to follow, and immediately be able to do this allocation right here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, to, as far as what portfolio size do I recommend? Just do 100 shares of each till you're really confident and then scale up at your own comfort. Uh, but I will say very quickly, almost every client I talk to, they start off small, within a month they're all in. They're putting hundreds of thousands of dollars to work, some of them millions of dollars to work. And it's because they're sick of having to worry about what the hell's gonna happen with their portfolio. They're sick of waking up and $30,000 is gone because yeah. of a Trump tweet. Or they're sick of uh, paying a, a money manager, 
you know, one to 2% to manage half a million bucks. And that, you know, they're up 3% on the year and we're doing 18.2. Or even worse, uh, you know, they're scared of a bear flag. We'd spend an hour with the guy, poor guy, uh, missed out on this entire rally because he was so scared from all the doom and gloomers out there. He was uh, scared of a bear flag, a little uh, evil triangles dictating his trading ideas. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, it's up to you. We're not your financial advisor. You know, we get away with being able to sell this program uh, to the masses by being a, a newsletter that provides general advice. But look, we have over 120 people now following the alerts like religion. Most of them have become lazy. They're not listening to my live stream. They're not even opening the damn email. They're literally taking the text message, doing the trade, and going on with life because uh, they get it. They get that we have put options under our assets. They get that we're well diversified in an equity bond portfolio that is essentially as diversified as you possibly could get in American-related bonds and stocks. And they understand... Uh, that I am really good at predicting where these general moves are. <clears throat> now, if you want to be able to predict the moves yourself, I'll just go over really quickly our boot camp. This is a 16 week boot camp that repeats itself. You buy the boot camp one time and you're going to have access to me for the rest of your life. The boot camp repeats three times a year and covers the same information, but you'll see. <laughs> Every four months, we're gonna be able to reapply whatever that module is to current circumstances. So where do you see uh, the political climate in four months from now and eight months from now as we get closer to the election? I'm betting there's gonna be a lot of shit slinging going on, a lot of volatility, and who knows, maybe an explosion in the trade war front. Um, so it'd be fun to see how that progresses. Now on the other side, I think if you watch my daily videos, you'll, you'll note that I'm not a perma bull, I'm not a perma bear. I listen to very bullish people, I listen to very bearish people, and I have to take all that information together, and essentially we're just trying to predict two things. What's happening to interest rates on the long end of the bond market? And again, that's relatively easier to do. That's been somewhat easy to do because of all the forward guidance that the central banks give us. Okay, so now it's really just a matter of, is it enough to, uh, to upset the poor bond market? Okay, the equities market, at the end of the day, is really the main thing we're concerned about is inflation, central banks increasing interest rates, and whether or not uh, the trade war is going to escalate or not. Based on that, we can have a pretty good idea of what the stock market will do and not have to sweat every little dip and bounce in the, in the equities market. So here's what we do for you if you buy the boot camp, And we do have packages that give you a, a long financing plan. So you get the trade alerts and you get the boot camp. Some people just want the boot camp to start. Some people just want the trade alerts to start. So it's totally up to you. Dean can give you a lot of options. Uh, here's the outlook or the, the schedule for the boot camp. So Tuesday is a long webinar. Think of tennis practice, all right? This is not gonna be some fast-paced, scientific, uh, technical webinar where you're gonna learn 50 different options trading strategies in an hour. This is gonna be more like, all right guys, we're gonna line you up and we're gonna practice hitting the ball. That's, that's how much we're gonna try to accomplish in each module. We need repetition. We got to hit this ball a hundred times before you're going to feel confident doing it on your own. So again, this 16 week boot camp is really trying to get you to replace me in terms of being able to predict up or down on those two assets and then make you extremely confident at being able to do this exact strategy. We're not going to teach you anything else. And I don't think you could pull it off in 16 weeks. Um, beyond that, I think any other option strategy out there is completely unnecessary and a huge waste of your time and energy. You're going into a point in your life, you need to buckle down, sail into the coast, play it safe, and simplify. And that's what this is all about. So Tuesday, 
It's a recorded webinar. It's interactive. We're going to whip you into shape for being able to understand the trades in all circumstances. Okay. Monday is a two hour webinar Q and A. So this thing repeats itself. That means you can join at any time. You don't have to worry about missing the first week. You can jump into the boot camp when you're ready, watch the past module, take the weekly test, do the resource guide, use the Monday webinar to answer any questions. Tuesday is going to be about new content. Okay. So let's look at the week by week schedule. So week one is the big picture. Why you really only need four ETFs for the rest of your life. How to generate safe income using options. We'll talk about the three ways we make money, whether it's the underlying asset delivering the profit or whether it's the option contracts uh, in a flat down or up scenarios. I'm going to give you my Twitter, YouTube, and news sites I follow. So it's a broad basket of different, uh, all free sets of information that I follow from Bloomberg to Zero Hedge, from CNBC to uh, some Chinese news, all kinds of stuff. But it makes your life relatively easy. You enjoy following the politics and the financial uh, information that's coming out all around the world. I love it. It's fun to me. I'm going to hook you up so you can subscribe to the same Twitter accounts, the same YouTube accounts, and the same news sites. So you'll be able to easily track the exact same content that I'm using to, to get the big picture uh, correct. At the end of that webinar, you get a resource email with kind of a checklist of what to do and a test. Reply back to the test. I'm going to grade it. Week two, we're going to focus on actually doing the trades. Just technically, how do we get the information, place it in interactive brokers, and even how to set up the account right? Now, they ask you a million questions getting it going, so we're going to go A to Z, how to get in and out of all the trades using interactive brokers as uh, the recommended broker, just because it's so cheap, a dollar a trade. Now, I love Thinkorswim. I love Ameritrade. There's a lot of options out there. They're all the same. You learn one, you can do just about uh, any broker. Week three and four, call options. We're not gonna talk about how they relate to our strategy that much. We're really gonna make you an expert at call options. Everything under the sun, selling them and buying them. Quizzes, tests, at the end of each week. Again, this is all recorded. So if you miss it, you can go rewatch it at your own time. And again, you get the Monday webinar and the Tuesday webinar every week. Week five and six, we're going to cover put options. Now note that in general, we like to sell call options. I call it taking candy from a baby. It's, it's a group of very speculative uh, typically poor investors who can't afford to buy the equity. So they're trying to be a cheapskate and buy call options. Most of the time it's a losing bet. That's why we love to sell call options. Now on the other side of the coin, the put options we are buying are usually from Wall Street. These are huge banks with gigantic portfolios and they make a ton of money sitting there selling every put option at every strike every day. And they don't really care if they get assigned because they would like to buy the stock anyway and they have these huge lines of credit. So they can afford to do the put option strategy and they clean up with it. For us as a little guy, it's a great deal. We get insurance for around 20 to 50 cents per week and we're paying for it with the call options. So free insurance on your portfolio. We'll also talk about volatility, time premium, some of the things that make options a little more complex than just whether it's gone up or down. <clears throat> so you can get a feel for that. Week six and week seven, we're going to start to put it all together for you. Okay, we're going to talk about in the money versus out of the money. We're going to talk about a tight option caller versus a loose option caller. And then in week eight, we're going to go over upside down callers. That's what I just showed you guys on the TLT. If we go into a recession 
a bear market or a financial crisis, the only safe way to really bet down and have a safe profit is with owning the asset and then doing the in the money short call and the in the money long put. It's a beautiful trade and you'll see if you try to short the market with put options as volatility is spiking, it's extremely difficult. And if you just have a small upswing, you lose 50, 100% of your put. So I don't like to do that. We can keep these same boring returns piling in regardless of the direction of the market. We just have to get the direction correct. Week nine, we're gonna talk about how to get some crypto. I don't like Coinbase or Binance uh, because you really need a whole new education on security if you're gonna go that route. Uh, and currently we're recommending a small 2% position, 1% in Bitcoin, 1% in Ethereum. I believe if the trade war does escalate, that small 2% position can make us, our total portfolio have around a 5% return. So those assets have a good place in our portfolio at that small level. That's optional, but you'll learn how to do that. I'll also give you a landscape of the entire crypto space and which coins we might rotate into if my prediction's right and we see Bitcoin. So I was getting people into Bitcoin in December at 3,400 bucks. That's at 10,000. I expect it can go up considerably higher before we start to see all these alternative coins really rally. Uh, so we'll be playing that certainly as a trade war uh, potentially escalates. Now, if it de-escalates, we'll be changing our buy and hold portfolio substantially. Uh, but I just, I don't really think that will happen. Week 10, 11, and 12, we're gonna be filling out your spreadsheet. Okay, so you get a copy of this same spreadsheet to manage your trades. And we actually spent a lot of money in 2018 building something like a Tesla uh, Gigafactory, but for building these spreadsheets. So I can go change the template on my end and then issue everyone new spreadsheets that you can quickly move all your trades into and have the same tracking I have. So this is a huge step in the right direction. Uh, and you'll see it, it only takes about two minutes a day to fill out your spreadsheet. And you'll have a beautiful profit loss, you know what you're doing. You won't be a cowboy winging it anymore, or uh, you know, I don't know what a good analogy is, but even though you're only gonna be trading at three to four stocks total, it's so nice to organize your, your trades so you can see what's going on in a nice, easy format. So we're gonna actually spend three weeks uh, getting you up to date on that. Some of the materials, just how to use your darn computer. I found that's actually a stumbling block for a lot of people. We're gonna teach you how to kind of automate a lot of the tasks on the computer, get you familiar with these Google Drive services, Google Docs, Google Spreadsheets. And we're just gonna fill out your real trades for three weeks. So I'll sit there with you live, show you how to input it into my spreadsheet. I can flip the screen on a few of you guys. And uh... okay, does that sound better, Eric? As far as the chatter in the background? Okay, great. Week 13, we'll talk about what to do in a financial crisis, how we'll optimize our buy and hold portfolio on top of doing the upside down callers. Week 14, we'll talk about what might enhance our returns after a financial crisis. And week 15 and 16, we're gonna do a little bit of advanced options. We'll talk about credit spreads, debit spreads, and writing put options. And again, after that, it repeats over and over and over again. All right, let's take a quick break and see what questions we have out there. What, uh, what portfolio size are you considering to start with, Eric? Do you think you could start with 25K and... Uh, Put in something like interactive brokers so you could follow all of the programs. Tuesday's session uh, for the boot camp will probably be between an hour and two hours, uh, depending on how, how many questions people have. And again, it is recorded and published uh, to the members only of the boot camp. Yes, starting at 1 p.m.
Eric says, do I ever use, so yeah, so here, let's go back to that bootcamp. Only time I would use a leveraged ETF would be if I thought there was a stock crash and instead of using put options, which again are a little complex for a lot of people. Um, I actually, even in October, we may put some of these in our buy and hold portfolio. If I see that the farming deal is not happening, they're not going to buy agricultural products, which, you know, you have to assume that's the case. They've been telling us they'd do this for two years. They haven't, they've done the opposite. They've reduced purchases. And this is in the face of uh, a food shortage, which is their worst nightmare. The worst thing that could possibly happen to China is their slave labor can't buy food, for heaven's sakes. They tax those poor people at 70%. Imagine that. You make 11 grand a year sitting in a factory building iPhones, and you have to pay 70% of your income to the government. And now you can't afford to buy food because pork prices doubled. So despite that, they still won't buy farming goods. That leads me to believe they really don't want a trade deal. And that's because China doesn't want to give up their competitive advantage. They're taking advantage of the whole world by having their exact setup where they steal everybody's technology, they rip off all the products, they subsidize. I mean, they have a whole plan that they've released uh, that's all over the internet, exactly which sectors they're going to uh, to fuel with all their tax revenues and subsidize and try to take over. And um, so, you know, a normal company in America, there's no way they can compete when China's putting a trillion bucks a year into some industry. Uh, so yeah, so Yang, SQQ, and SDAO are three ETFs I would put a small position in, maybe in October, once the SPY is somewhere above 310 expecting that the trade war does break down and we get a sell-off. Uh, if we wanted to short the treasury market, which again, usually the play out in a financial crisis is <clears throat> stocks crash first. There's no central bank to, to just buy them up, at least not yet, uh, directly, legally. Uh, bond market will be protected by the central bank as long as they can. Usually the bond market snaps second, during all of this chaos, you get your spike in gold, and then eventually gold sells off once the whole reset's accomplished. Uh, no, I don't ever use a leveraged ETF as a spy proxy. We don't need to. These profits are great. We don't need leverage. Uh, if you want to use leverage, your broker will give you margin, a lot of margin. Buy an extra 100 shares of the spy. There aren't option contracts on all the uh, uh, triple leveraged ETF products out there uh, that expire three times a week. SPY, SPY is the best ETF period uh, for so many reasons. 504 top American companies, three option expirations a week, and it's the most highly traded security in the world, bar none. Nothing comes even close. Plus, it's also the biggest hedge fund now. Uh, and now it's, you know, it's, it's not like a accredited investor only hedge fund, but it's way bigger than Ray Dalio's uh, fund uh, because it outperforms. It's been putting hedge funds out of business left and right because hedge funds can't even outperform the SPY. Okay, so let's say we had a stock market crash, rates get hiked up, we've got inflation. I mean, that's probably what's coming. We're probably gonna have a huge bubble, stocks and bonds go much higher. And then finally inflation comes in and ruins the whole party. Uh, so most likely if that happened, first stocks would crash. Central bank will try to support its bond market as much as it can. It's gonna print a ton of cash uh, in doing so. Gold rockets higher. And then we get the reset. So then we have interest rates slowly work their way much higher and that's a reset. So if we get a reset, I would rather have uh, QQQ over the SPY. I would want to diversify into some of these other ETFs, China, Japan, Europe, and then Asia, or the, the, the coast around Asia. So it's like Singapore, the Philippines, Vietnam, emerging markets like that. 
And then instead of owning the TLT, if we do get interest rates hiked way up and we know we're about to start a new cycle of lowering interest rates, uh, that's when you might want to have something other than the TLT, like AGG, LQD, or HYG. Uh, and even if you want some emerging market bonds, uh, two other ETFs. So <clears throat> we're probably about two to five years away from that, Eric, if I had to guess. So I think we've got another one to two years of bubble. Bubble of everything is what we're looking at right now. And then things start to pop. Two thousand twenty. Yeah, who knows? It's hard to predict. It's much easier to uh, predict what will happen uh, in a you know one to three month window. Hard to predict what will happen today or tomorrow. It's hard to predict what will happen three to five years from now. Uh, but we can have a pretty good idea what's going to happen in the next couple months. And so, uh, with our time frames, you know, we're trading weekly or forty eight hour periods. And so. That does allow us to do a pretty good job with that. Any other questions out there? What's uh, what's holding people back? Kate, you've been watching for a few weeks now. What's holding you back from at least taking some of the trades? What other questions do you have, Eric? Or Rakesh? Frank? Oh, I'm going to unmute everybody too now that we're towards the end here. Any last questions out there? All right, guys. Well, <clears throat> we went just under two hours. We'll have the replay come out Saturday, so if you want to rewatch it. And uh, I really appreciate everyone's time. We'll have another webinar next Thursday and a spy trade alert tomorrow at noon. So consider uh, putting some money behind it or at least paper trading it so you can get a feel for everything yourself. You wanna say any last words, Dean, before I close this out? Uh, no, just uh, feel free to call me, uh, team. If you have any questions, would be happy to, to look at your portfolio. Uh, see where you are in life and uh, just just really look at your total investment ecosystem uh, and see how how what we're doing uh, will fit in and why and uh, definitely look forward to doing that with you when you call and uh, look forward to, to absolutely learning more uh, talking about the market with you and seeing how we can get you defensive uh, with your nest egg all right thank you guys until tomorrow thanks Jason thanks Dean